Hello friends, my name is Shashank and welcome back to your channel Corporate Guy and today in this video we are going to learn about the intrusion detection system and the some of the most important components, functions and how to uh, design your intrusion detection system and what are the important components or characteristics of a successful intrusion detection system which you must know and some of the most common intrusion detection systems which are currently in market right which you can choose for your own facility so let's start with the very first question which is the how to design right what are the basics of intrusion detection alarm system so whenever we try to design an intrusion detection system there are most important questions the four important questions which i think we must uh, address before we start uh, designing our intrusion detection system so the first question is the this one is the, this is the first question that uh, what is this system protecting against that why do you need actually your uh, your uh, intrusion detection system why why do you need what do you want to protect with your intrusion detection system right so this is the very first question next is the what type of sensors you want to use right if you want to protect your uh, facility against uh, anyone who is trying to uh, scale your boundary wall so what type of sensors you need for that so you must answer that question also what type of sensors what type of sensors you need right and then if you in case if you uh, install your sensors your intrusion detection system so whenever there is an alarm how will you uh, respond to that alarm and how that alarm will be transmitted to your control room whether you want it wired system you want a uh, wireless right whatever the way you choose it should be addressed right here right and next is the how will this signal be sent right if you are uh, uh, let's say uh, sorry so next question is who will respond to these signals so if we have received the signal then whom, whom do you want to respond you want to respond to your uh, local uh, uh, in-house control room or you want to uh, respond people who are uh, handling multiple control rooms right from a central control room they are handling multiple facilities so which whom do you want to respond to when you receive in uh, alarms or uh, notifications from your uh, intrusion detection system right so who will be responding who will be responding so these are the four questions which you must answer in the very first phase when you are uh, planning to install an intrusion detection system right so when you have answered these questions the next step is to understand that what are the important components of an intrusion detection system right so let's answer this question the important uh, components right the important components so the number first the most important component is your control panel right so the control panel which uh, analyzes uh, which sends or which detects the intrusions is called the uh, control panel right it's it's like a brain of your intrusion detection system right like cpu right so this is how the control panel works so the next one is your keypad or wireless touchpad or any remote controlled remote operated uh, uh, system which can uh, um, mask or deactivate the alarms when you receive the alarms right so when you uh, receive alarm you get the notification in your system right so you need uh, a local as well as a central system to deactivate the alarms in case you receive alarm and you want to deactivate or reset it you need a system for that right so this is the second component and third one is obviously the most important is the sensors right so when you have the intrusion detection system you must have sensors which are uh, calibrated and installed as per the specification and as per the requirement right and then we have the uh, transmission mode how do you want to transmit uh, your alarms whether you want to use wires you want to use wireless whatever the way you use that should be uh, come under uh, in this component list right so this is the important components which you need uh, to install your intrusion detection system right so now let's talk about the a uh, few of the more uh, important aspects of intrusion detection system that is the uh, 
uh, what are the different type of uh, situations or scenarios which can uh, activate the alarms right so the first one is the the, the reasons which can uh, generate alarms right so let's understand what can be the different reasons which generates alarms so uh, the number one reason is reasons so the number one run is the actual intrusion if you are having uh, actual intrusion in your facility your intrusion detection must uh, activates and sends you the alarm right so that is the uh, first uh, condition ideal condition and second one is the whenever there is a change right in a in a condition let's say uh, you have in installed uh, intrusion detection system uh, on, a, on your outer periphery right and there is a sudden change in the temperature or or condition of the weather or your environment that can also trigger an alarm in your system right change in state right change in state so that is the first thing second thing right and third one is sometimes we install uh, uh, sensors or intrusion or, 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 or alarms right and somebody tries to temper it right uh, you have seen various videos or various instances when somebody tries to temper uh, your uh, alarm your intrusion detection system but there are intrusion detection systems which comes uh, with uh, anti-temper right they can detect if anybody is trying to tamper with your with your intrusion detection system similarly when somebody tries to enter your uh, passcode in your mobile phone multiple times but if we, if, if that person is uh, entering wrong one your mobile will get locked right so this is anti tamper so that one cannot enter in your system after having multiple attempts so this is the anti tamper system and when you are anybody trying to uh, tamper with your system your system should send you an alarm that somebody is trying to uh, manipulate or tamper the uh, intrusion detection system right uh, and then we have the system failure in case your system is not working and you should know about it because if your uh, intrusion detection system is installed around 10 kilometers away from your facility and how would you know that your system is working or not so your system should have the capability to send you an alarm that yes there is a system failure and the system might not work uh, properly so that is the fourth uh, situation in which you should get an alarm right uh, and the last one is your uh, failure of the system itself right uh, let's say you have a sensor installed and the sensor is not detecting but your system is working and your system knows that the sensor is not detecting that that in that case also you should get the alarms in your system right so you can say it a uh, uh, sensor failure Right, so these are the uh, some of the situations or conditions in which you should get an alarm from your intrusion detection uh, system. Right, so uh, now let's we uh, next we will talk about uh, the the uh, how to make sure that your intrusion detection system is installed properly right and it is detecting and it is fulfilling the requirements for which you have spent so much of your money right so now let's talk about the three important characteristics of, of your intrusion detection system right and these are the let me just draw it for you uh, I call it a triangle it's a very bad triangle okay so the number one is the PD I will explain all of these things PD right uh, next is the VD and third one is the NAR or slash FAR right so I will explain all these three components three components to make sure that your system three characteristics right to make sure that your system is working fine and it is installed as per the specification and as per the requirements right so now first let's talk about the PD what is PD PD is defined or can you can say explained as probability probability to defeat probability of detection I'm sorry probability of detection what does it mean the probability of detection let us say uh, that 
you have installed a, a fence alarm system in your facility, right? And there are multiple attempts. Let us say in one day you had 10 attempts on your fence, right? But you get, but you received only three alarms. So what does it mean? It means that your system failed to detect seven alarms out of those 10 alarms. So if you want to find out what is the probability of you, of the detection, you will divide number of alarms you received and number of attempts you had, right? So you will get the probability of detection. Let us say you, uh, you had uh, five attempts, right? And you received all of these alarms, five out of five, right? So what will be the probability of detection? You will divide five by five and you will get the one. So this is the ideal state. We call it the ideal number that probability of detection should always be one, which means that your system should be able to detect all of the attempts, every attempt, but Right. We, we want that uh, your system should detect all of the attempts and hence your probability of detection will be one. This is the ideal state, but in the ideal in the real world, the one is not possible. So we are OK, even if we are able to uh, get a value of 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. What does it mean? What does it mean? Let us say uh, you had 10 attempts, right? As discussed, you received eight alarms. So eight divided by 10, what does it mean? It will give you a 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 is your probability of detection of your system, right? Let us say you, you uh, received nine out of 10. So your probability of detection will be 0 0.9. So this is called the probability of detection. So 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 is also uh, an ideal situation. If your system is working fine, it, it means that, that your system is working fine. But it if it goes uh, beyond 0 0.5 or 0. If it goes beyond 0 0.5, below 0 0.5, it means that you need to uh, make adjustment. You need to make calibration in your system so that you can get at least 0 0.7, 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 probability detection right so this is the number one characteristics and how do you def uh, check that your system is working fine you after installing uh, try to make attempts and you find out that whether your system is working or fine or not and after uh, five months six months or one year you uh, again uh, check your system calibration right so that is the number one characteristics so now let's talk about the second characteristic that is the vd so what is vd okay uh, second one is the VD, which means vulnerability, vulnerability to defeat. What does it mean? You install your system, but you don't know that how easily it is to defeat by the intruders or by the perpetrators, right? So we call it vulnerability to defeat. So how do you define VD? Uh, it means that if somebody is trying to tamper with your system, how easily that person can achieve that, uh, uh, that that motive we call it vulnerability to defeat for that we have anti-temper as i already explained to you that if somebody is trying to temper with your system you should able to get an alarm so similarly if uh, 10 attempts has happened to temper your system and you received only one uh, alarm it means that your system is easily very vulnerable to defeat right and there are various ways in which a person can defeat your uh, your uh, uh, intrusion detection system the number one is the bypassing what does it mean what does it mean to bypass a vulnerability uh, so uh, intrusion detection system right uh, we uh, all of the intrusion detection system works with uh, definite uh, boundaries we don't have infinite boundaries in which you can cover 10 kilometers with the one intrusion detection system right so it means that if you have installed a fence detection system right so this is your fence detection system uh, which can detect any intrusion if somebody is trying to uh, scale it Anna. So with the distance of, let us say, uh, of one meter, if, if a person is trying to scale it without touching a fence with a, uh, within a distance of one meter, your system will give you the alarm. 
that is the ideal situation but let us say the person knows that this system works with a one meter of range so that person will try to get a bigger ladder right and it will that person will try to scale it with a with a gap of two meter what does it mean that that means that that intruder has bypassed your system it has uh, it has it is trying the person is trying to scale your boundary wall beyond the acceptable range of your system so this is called bypassing right now let's take another example uh, <clears throat> let us say you have this uh, mm, 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 you have this camera right which which can detect motions the uh, uh, motion detection camera which you have this camera can detect motions up to a range of let us say 200 meters that's the hypothetical number 200 meters but the person knows that if i go beyond 200 meters the, uh, the camera will not be able to detect so that person is trying to uh, enter through this from 250 meters which means that the person has bypassed your system so in simple words that if a person is trying to uh, uh, overcome your intrusion detection system by going beyond its detect range it means it is bypassing the system so that is the first way one way of by uh, defeating your uh, intrusion detection system right so second one is the uh, uh, spoofing right spoofing so what is what is spoofing uh, spoofing there are certain uh, camera or certain sensors which when you set in a certain uh, specification they will work in a certain specification right let us say uh, you have a video motion detection system right uh, there is a range in which a camera will detect any moving object right it is we, we have defined a speed right if a person is moving at a 10 meter per second right let us say a person is moving towards your camera this is your camera right All right and it is moving towards your camera with a uh, 10 meter per second of speed the camera should be able to detect that is a number right i'm just giving you but the if person is has reduced its speed right to one uh, five meter per second which means that even though it is in the detection range of the camera but still the camera will not be able to detect it because the camera is not set to detect any moving object with this speed which means that even though the person is in the detection range but still it is uh, the camera is not able to detect that person due to the reduced speed so this is called spoofing which means that passing through the detection range without even without getting detected so there are multiple ways uh, in which you can achieve that so there are two ways in which you can defeat the uh, intrusion detection system by bypassing and by spoofing so this is the uh, second way so now let's talk about the third component third characteristic that is the uh, which is the NAR and FAR. So what is NAR? NAR is called a nuisance alarm uh, rate, right? And FAR is called a false alarm rate. So there are two different uh, definitions. If you have, if you don't know about these terminologies, you can watch out this video. I will share the link in the description box, right? So nuisance alarm rate and false alarm rate, which means that whether your work system is giving you the uh, right alarms or it is giving the false alarm or the nuisance alarm so what are nuisance alarms nuisance alarm you can check out in this video so for that your uh, your ratio should be also be uh, within the range of uh, 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 0 0.7 right which means that um, if you get uh, uh, 10 alarms on daily basis and out of 10 alarms if you get uh, the let us say seven alarms which are nuisance alarm right which means that you have a 0.7 it means that if you are getting one which means that your system is not working fine so your uh, ideal state is zero 
you should not get any nuisance alarm or any false alarm which means that if you get one out of uh, 10 a nuisance alarm which means that your uh, ratio is 0.1 which means that it is okay you can get nuisance alarm and false alarms uh, from your system but it should not exceed from 0 0.5 right to 1 which means that 1 is not the ideal state in this case, zero is the ideal state. In the probability of detection, one was the ideal state. In the nuisance alarm rate, zero is the ideal state, which means that uh, you should get zero nuisance alarms out of your total daily alarms. So this is the ideal state, but that is not uh, possible. So we can set our own standards based on our requirements. If you are okay with receiving 10 out of 10 nuisance alarms, that is your uh, requirement. If you are not okay, even uh, getting a one nuisance alarm rate that is your requirement so you will set your system into to, to those specifications right so these are the three important characteristics to make sure that your system is working as per the requirements so one was the probability of detection second one was the vulnerability to defeat and third one was the nuisance alarm rate and false alarm rate so i hope that you are able to understand how does uh, intrusion detection system work and what are the important components why how to design and how to make sure that the system is working fine right so in the next video we will talk about some of the common intrusion detection systems and how to use them where to use them right and what are the pros and cons of those systems so that is all for today's video and thank you for, uh, thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you so much